Some people say that math is another language. And when you learn math, it's like you're learning another language. I don't know if I agree with that or if I disagree. But in this video, I'm going to answer a question I received from a viewer, which is directly related to that question. I'm going to do my best to answer it. As always, if you have any advice for this person, leave a comment below. So let's go ahead and check out the email here. The person's name is Nathan, and the subject is math symbology. The message is the following. Hi, really love your content and have learned from it. As an engineer who graduated in 2002, I find myself in my hobbies and other studies trying to read various math and physics papers. I've forgotten a lot of my original studies, and if I'm being honest, I was not as good of a student as I am now, so it can be hard to follow a lot of the math. The biggest issue I have a lot of the time is just following the symbology. It's kind of like trying to read a language without knowing the alphabet. If there is associated discussion, it seems like the concepts are often not really that hard, but without an understanding of what the various symbology is, it can be difficult to follow the math itself. So I guess I'm kind of looking for a shortcut. I have used stuff like Mathematica to actually do some of the math I've forgotten, but when it comes to reading it, I don't know where to begin. Knowing that I once knew some of this math, I feel like if I had some sort of symbology codex, I could follow it better. Maybe I couldn't do the derivations myself, but I could at least understand the concepts being described if I understood the symbology. Do you have a good resource for someone, like me, that talks about the various symbologies used in different areas of math? Also, would you consider ever doing a video on the topic? I am not the biggest fan of videos for learning as I prefer to read, but I would definitely watch such a thing and I imagine other would, would, others would too. Thanks so much. That's a really cool question because that's a big deal, right? The symbols in mathematics are something that um, you need to learn somewhere. So you can pick up any math book and it's going to have you know, the necessary symbols and theory in the book that will help you, you know, get through the material. But I have another answer for you that I think might be a better answer. So it's a bad answer because as an engineering student, this might be something you never studied. It's a good answer in the sense that this is going to lead you along the right path towards self-study and it's a more rewarding path if you take this path. And that is the path of proof. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. So I've got two books here and they're both great and I have many more books on proofs that are excellent and there are many more books. I honestly picked these two because I found them. I have such a mess here with my insane collection of books. These are the ones I was able to find right away so I could quickly make this video. The first one here is called Mathematical Proofs, A Transition to Advanced Mathematics. And I think that's what you need. I think this is going to take you along a different path. You know, you start to read a book like this, you learn to do math proofs, you're currently an engineer. I mean, who knows, right? Maybe you'll go back to college. Maybe you'll get a master's or a PhD in math because once you know how to write proofs, that kind of opens up the door for higher level math. And a book like this shows you how to do that. So this book, let me just show you briefly what it contains. And again, it's probably something you've never seen. Engineers don't really need to learn to write proofs. They usually do just a lot of calculus and physics. So it starts with sets. So already it's you know something you might have seen. Well, communicating mathematics, that's the first uh, chapter zero. It talks about learning mathematics and stuff like that. And then logic, this is where it's going to be very new for you probably. And then proof techniques, right? Direct proof and proof by contrapositive, more proofs, but actually has sample proofs that are written correctly. Proof by contradiction, prove or disprove, things that engineering students really don't see. Equivalence relations, very important functions, induction. And it gets even better because this is going to revisit other topics such as proofs in calculus. You've probably seen some calculus, so you'll see that. Proofs in number theory, cardinalities of sets, and then proofs in group theory. And it has answers and hints to certain problems. This is a beautiful book. I've done a ton of the exercises and I've read decent portions of this book. And I've worked through several of the examples on my own. And I think it's great for, for self-study. Apparently I did this one or someone did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did this one. Yeah, pretty cool. So a book like this is worth it if you can find it at a reasonable price. I'm pretty sure this book is a little bit pricey. I don't think it's like super inexpensive. And it is a hardcover, which is nice. The other one I have here, which I highly recommend, and if you have to pick one, pick this one. 
because it's cheaper. And as much as I prefer hardcovers, this one's a soft cover. And so it's really good for like reading in bed. So like if you're laying in bed, say you go to work and you come home and I don't know what you do after work. Maybe you watch TV or have dinner and you're going to bed. You can grab this book and you can sit down and you can read it, right? It's just a nice activity to do um, before going to sleep. It's called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach. And it's by Daniel Vellman. This one spends a great deal of time really explaining the logic, which is critical for understanding proofs in higher level math. And I think this book is amazing. I think it's amazing. I, I only bought this book because a lot of people were leaving comments in the channel. And when I first got it, I, I really wasn't um, too excited about it because I already have other proof writing books that I really like, like, like this one and several others. And I started reading it and I thought, wow, no wonder people like this book. This is really good. This is a great book. So I am now a huge fan of this book thanks to um, people leaving comments. <laughs> so I was directly influenced by everyone's comments about this book. And let me, they're, they're, people are right. The, the, the masses are correct. This book is incredible. Yeah. You notice it doesn't have as many topics as um, the other book. Like the other book has specific chapters devoted to proofs and group theory, proofs and number theory, etc. This does have nice examples and stuff in it. You'll find scattered knowledge in there, but um, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. Obviously, it's better if you can get both. It explains the concept of a vacuous truth really, really well. Uh, and it, it'll try to explain things in more than one way. So sometimes it'll explain a certain concept. And then he'll say, another way to think about this is, and I think that's really good because he's giving you, you know, a different perspective uh, on the same topic, which is helpful. You know, you, you get one of those, I'm just going to use calculus as an example, one of those big calculus books and, and you're trying to learn, let's just say, um, you know, surface integrals. And you look at an example and you're like, okay, I think I get it. And then you go to the exercises and it's like, oh, that doesn't make any sense, right? So I'm sure you've been there. This book tries to avoid that by giving you plenty of explanations and plenty of examples. Let's see if we can find a, a proof. Oh, here's a proof. Here's some calculus proofs. Let's see what it does here. Let's just turn the page back here. Show that. Here's a proof. I love how it's soft cover. I can just bend it. And it's pretty affordable, this book. Show that the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 all over x minus 3 is equal to 7. And <laughs> I love this. Oh, oh, it almost brings a tear to my eye. Look, he writes scratch work. That is exactly what I do. That is exactly what I do. I also write scratch work. And I didn't get it from this book. It's just something I've always done. I had this, this friend who would always do that. And he would always say, do not mix your scratch work and your presentation. So you have your scratch work. This is where you figure out the proof, right? And he goes through and explains it everything. Explains everything. According to the definition of limits, our goal means that for every positive number epsilon, there is a positive number delta such that if x is any number such that that is true, then that is true. Yeah, perfect. It, there's, there's, no, there's no incorrectness there. There's no ambiguity. You know, if you go online, you look at websites or even people's videos, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not singling anyone out, just in general, in general, there is... Um, a lack of, I don't want to say correctness, but you know, a lack of detail in, in a lot of the proofs you find online in, in, on websites and in videos. Books tend to be better, right? They're always correct. Books are usually 99% correct or more. And some books explain better than others. And this is one of those books. That's why I love this book. It's just so correct. It's so correct. Thus, the entire proof will have the following form. Let epsilon be an arbitrary positive number. So, so he's being very, very specific. Um, a lot of people would just say let epsilon be greater than zero, and you just assume it's arbitrary. But um, you know, it's you're supposed to say arbitrary. So he does it. Yeah. And then two steps remain to be worked out, and then he keeps going here. Yeah. Very nice. And then here's the proof. Here's finally the proof. Here's here's the actual proof. Look how short that is. So he spends a great deal of time explaining just to get here okay just to get here if you pick up an advanced book on mathematics it's just going to go here and oftentimes it's not even going to be this clean so he does a great job there's other great books uh, for proof writing other modern books uh, the one by jay cummings 
is one that I recently picked up and it was really cool because I reviewed the book by Jay Cummings. I'll, I'll try to leave a link in the description to that one because it's great. I own it. I own all of his books. And he commented, <laughs> uh, and I know it was him because it had his picture. I'm like, oh my God, he saw my video. <laughs> That's really cool. Maybe he can autograph my book, but no. Yeah. Anyways, I digress. Um, symbology and mathematics. Yeah. So get a book on proof writing and I think it's going to help you. I think it's going to help you with the symbols and math. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to be blown away by what mathematics is because as an engineering student, you know, you, you study math, you do a lot of math. Engineers do a lot of math. They do a lot of physics. Engineering is no joke. I'm, I'm definitely not like downplaying engineering. It is my view engineering. And this is, this might draw some criticism, but I think engineering is a harder major than a math major. I think engineers have it tough uh, because they have to do math. They have to do physics. Uh, and they, they tend to have teachers that are really hard too. Some of those engineering professors, and I'm not saying they're bad, but just it's just the concepts are tough, right? Like you have hard tests and hard assignments and you've got these really big group projects. It's, in my opinion, one of the hardest majors out there is engineering. So when you see something like this, it's very different and it's very beautiful. And this is this is why math people love math. At least it's one of the reasons I love math is, is proof writing. So hopefully this will show you uh, some of the beautiful areas of mathematics. It's very rewarding when you can uh, write a proof on your own. So I'll try to leave links to both of these in the description. And if anyone else has any advice um, for books on math symbology um, that could help Nathan or anyone else, maybe there's another approach. Maybe you can get a different type of book besides a proof writing book. So um, if you have other ideas, other comments, I'm sure there's other ideas or, or other re recommendations leave a comment in the comment section below. Anyways, till next time, good luck and take care.